Hello and happy Saturday. Thank you for joining me at Card Slider for another Star Wars The Last Jedi leaks discussion. Now, before we go any further, I just want to say, of course, this video will contain spoilers for Star Wars Episode 8. So, if you want to go in with a clean slate, I recommend stopping right now. This will be the only warning. So, now that that's out of the way, let's talk about today's video. And I thought it'd be interesting to take a look at the past six months or so of The Last Jedi leaks to kind of see what's legitimate. And all of these come from makingstarwars.net. So if you want to keep up to date on the latest leaks, besides subscribing to me, I would recommend checking out their website because they always have really interesting stuff. And more often than not, as I'm going to talk about here, it's pretty reliable. And it's really this reliability that drove me to make this video. And it all comes from a couple of days ago where Vanity Fair released their The Last Jedi pictures. And most notable to me is that Laura Dern's character was given a name, Admiral Holdo, and she was shown to have pink hair. This was predicted by Making Star Wars back in November of 2016. Now, Making Star Wars hasn't confirmed the following, but they said there's rumors that Admiral Holdo has actually kind of divided the resistance into a couple of military factions, probably due to some sort of difference in opinion on how the organization should be run. Also interestingly, and keep in mind this is actually from before the trailer came out, it says that she brings these new ships to the resistance fleet. And Making Star Wars says they're sort of an abstract design, but they have ball turrets on them, just like the low altitude assault transports from Attack of the Clones. Now, these are obviously the ships that are shown in the trailer, which have these small turrets at the bottom. So that confirms that those ships are Resistance and not New Republic ships, and that they're probably under the command of Admiral Holdo. This next part is really interesting, I'm going to touch on it more later, but it says, and I quote, Supposedly you can see the Resistance fighters in them as they blast ties and go up against Supreme Leader Snoke's Mega Destroyer, and I'm going to talk about the Mega Destroyer in just a second. These ships were called Honey Droppers during production, and the codename for the Mega Destroyer was the Hundred Acre Wood. Let's segue into some other characters, and apparently Poe Dameron is a fleet leader. I'm not sure if that was his actual rank in the last film, but that's what his rank is now, and I guess he doesn't get along very well with Admiral Holdo. Poe Dameron also has an upgraded X-Wing, and it should be a little bit faster than last time, so hopefully he gets some cool action scenes. Let's go on to a new character though, and that's Benicio Del Toro, and we recently learned that his name is DJ. We don't know what DJ stands for, it's not his actual name, it's some sort of nickname, which apparently will become clear to us as we watch the movie. Making Star Wars describes him as the classic man in black, so dangerous but mysterious. He also doesn't appear to be a bad guy, rather, perhaps he's a neutral party. Furthermore, he seems to be kind of slimy and dirty and part of the criminal underworld, so that should be fun in a Star Wars context, especially where a lot of people want more grit. Making Star Wars also reported that he has a ship which can be highly contrasted to his appearance. It seems to be some sort of freighter, not unlike the Millennium Falcon, but the inside is very sterile, very neat, kind of like an Apple store. And this contrast is certainly not accidental, so it either indicates that he's stolen the ship for somebody or that he's not quite what he appears to be or maybe something else. But it does seem like he will be somehow involved with the planet of Canto Bight, and this planet was named by Making Star Wars a while ago and was recently confirmed by Vanity Fair. We saw a few pictures around last summer showing the cast of Episode 8 filming in Dubrovnik, Croatia. Making Star Wars confirmed that this is the planet Canto Bight. We don't really know what's going on there, but rumors have been that it's some sort of casino planet. Alright, let's move on though. We don't really know a whole lot else about that planet, and I think it now would be a good time to talk about Captain Phasma. Back in March, Making Star Wars said that she will have some sort of spear, and this was confirmed in recently released promotional pictures. Apparently at all times she's to be flanked by two Executioner Stormtroopers, and these are basically the guys who have the energy weapon that Finn fought against in Episode 7, the FN-2199. In this film they will actually have a slightly different mask, which will set them apart from other Stormtroopers. Speaking of people who have guards with them, let's talk about Snoke really briefly. Snoke is said to dress more like a king than a military leader. He wears a fancy gold robe, jester or genie slippers, and I think you can imagine what that means, basically slippers with a pointed top on them, and he wears a ring on his left hand. This ring is kind of interesting because it's huge, making Star Wars describes it as like a ring pop in size, and it's black, it's like jet black, and some have thought that this might be some sort of kyber crystal. Snoke will be guarded by Praetorian guards, and apparently six to eight at all times, and these are kind of a playoff of Emperor Palpatine's honor guards, except they're a little weirder. Rather than having like helmets with a visor in it, they just have these face masks that are just blank and red. Also unlike Palpatine's honor guards, it seems like the Praetorians will actually see some combat. 
Let's talk about spaceships now, and since we're on Snoke, let's talk about his personal Super Star Destroyer. And this thing is described by making Star Wars to be bigger, perhaps, than any other ship we've seen other than the Death Star. And it's also kind of, well, I kind of understood it to be pretty frightening. It's described as a flying wing, which is a type of aircraft with 10 or more engines, and it's being used to hunt down the resistance. The last thing I'm going to mention for this video is that they have talked about a few new TIE Fighter variants, including Kylo Ren's personal TIE Fighter. I've done a video on that a few weeks ago, so if you want to check that out, I'll put a link down in the description. But anyways guys, those are all of the making Star Wars leaks that I feel are pretty reliable and that can be pretty much taken as accurate at this point. I'm just going to say I do like how this movie appears to be turning out, especially with all the new characters, all the new weaponry, and the new vehicles, and it seems like there will be a focus on conflict, which of course is a lot of fun. But I would love to hear what you guys think. Let me know down in the comments whether these leaks have you more excited or not, and if you're excited at all for episode 8. I know that I couldn't be more pumped. Also, if you made it this far, my question of the day is this. You get to create an entirely new planet for Star Wars episode 8. What would the planet be like, and what would you name it? Anyways guys, I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. As always, may the force be with you.